6,520 pounds, the half ton towable, couples camping, very popular rear kitchen uh, 274 Cherokee here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, with a uh, new generation of updates, a revised optional deluxe outside mini camp kitchen, and a beautifully modernized interior is going to make this one a, uh, uh, this is going to be a summertime knockout right here. We are still fresh off the delivery truck. Technically, at the time of this filming, we are still technically hooked up to the delivery truck, so we're not even fresh off the delivery truck. So pardon the shipping plastic at the time, but uh, I wanted to jump in here and get some footage of this with the slide out closed, because one of the hiccups of a lot of rear kitchens with the slides closed is you just can't get through much and access much. Now, that being said, it is still pretty darn difficult to get to that uh, refrigerator in the back. In point of fact, it's darn near impossible without moving the slide. But the majority of the kitchen cabinetry and the countertop space you can access. Now, you do have an outside mini fridge on this one where you could just bring along a cooler if you want a couple drinks or some lunch meat and then stop and make yourself a sandwich. But you can also get to all of the uh, slide-out seating or sleeping, as it were, in transit, plus very easy access to the bedroom and bathroom, of course, without ever touching the slide. Usually, though, rear kitchens are more designed for destination use than travel use. And once again, I am very impressed with the interior decor updates. Well, the exterior, too. They gave this thing a full facelift. Generally speaking, there is not a whole lot of equipment difference between this Cherokee and uh, the previous generation Cherokee. But considering um, there is more demand than Cherokee can supply campers right now. I would say they're doing something right, and I think that they're only going to exacerbate that with the newly modernized interior exterior decor. So, uh, starting over here in the slide out, we've got a, uh, a sort of uh, cinema style sofa seating arrangement with that little fold down armrest, but I love the cup holders in it. It just makes keeping drinks uh, available handy, and you will find huge windows. You want lights, you want sights, you want breeze. Ladies and gentlemen, you got it. Uh, in addition to that LED uh, interior package that we have going on here, these windows are just going to light this thing up like a candle. Now, those huge windows are set di uh, just diametrically opposed to this huge window. So your seating area has just an unbelievable amount of breeze right here. Um, and uh, you've also got this Neat little accent light above, which could very easily function as a pretty cool night light. Now this is a couple's camper, for sure. But we pull all those sheets down, we fold down the sofa and dinette, and we also have the benefit of these uh, handy individual pushback recliners right here. And what we find is this is a pretty guest-friendly trailer. So uh, if you're going to have a couple folks over, maybe you're just having a good time. Maybe you don't want your friends to drive home because you're having too good of a time. You know, you want to keep your friends safe. Or you've got the grands or some littles with you. Or you have a small family. I mean, you know, whatever works for you guys. It's a couple's camper that could sleep six pretty easily. And that's pretty cool. Now from there, we're going to open the door, um, <laughs> literally, to a lot of storage. And that's one of the things rear kitchens really bring to bear is they give you a ton of storage capacity, a lot more than a traditional rear living room. Starting with these 40 inch full extension drawers uh, below the dinette here, whether someone is sitting at it or sleeping at it, or frankly, even if there just isn't anybody at the dinette, it is so much easier to get to every ounce of that dinette storage this way. Now from there, if you take a look next to the refrigerator, you see a six and a half foot tall pantry. And I like that it's just got a traditional swing open door. It's not the kind of pantry where like you have to go armpit deep trying to get to any of the storage. But this right here, this is really just where it begins, not where it ends. Because as we shift around to the kitchen proper, you see that there is no shortage of storage or prep space or any of that around here. There is space for a wastebasket below that sink. And I mentioned outside when we first started how this has a newly revised deluxe mini camp kitchen. Well, that's hidden under this kitchen counter. But do you really feel that you've lost anything? The people at Cherokee are smart. You still have this 
whole cabinet space over there. You still have room for a wastebasket here, which actually didn't have last year. This alone is an improvement, but you see that heat shielding. That's the back of the deluxe mini camp kitchen. And then we still have a, a pair of oversized drawers right here, as opposed to, uh, you know, smaller drawers, you know, th that are very short in height compared to most brands. Cherokee for a long time has been using taller drawers, which is very handy for that big stuff. Have you guys ever had a drawer get stuck shut because one spatula was in the way? Well, that ain't gonna happen here. You know, that spatula's like, wow, nice drawer you have there. It'd be a shame if uh, something were to happen to it. <laughs> Now, rear kitchens give you more countertop and prep space than a rear living could ever dream of doing, um, with very few exceptions. And I'm having trouble even thinking of one offhand right now. But what's neat is whether it's your kitchen countertops, your tabletop, you've got pressed membrane counters here in the bathroom as well. And if you remove this, you see that we've got that beautiful uh, one-piece uh, stainless skirted farm sink. Very residential in feature and trend and that's really what Cherokee's done a good job of is they've taking uh, taking <laughs> taken the best parts of residential trends and applied them as appropriate to RVs because not just just because it's residential doesn't mean it's good in a camper but there are a lot of times obviously where it can be I love the big kitchen breeze windows notice those open for airflow but I don't want to forget all of the overhead cabinetry in addition to tons of lighting here in the kitchen now you notice you don't see power outlets under the overhead cabinets as is the case with most laminated rvs and there's reasons they have to do that and they're fine but what i do like is how cherokee gives you outlets in the kitchens close to the countertop level especially back in that corner where your coffee maker could go so that it is much much easier to uh, be able to access and utilize all those power outlets. And we do have that skylight above for extra natural lighting, though you could easily just pull the shade on that thing. And uh, you know, if it's a hot, hot day to keep the sun out of the camper. From here, I wanna kind of pivot around to refocus on this extra large campsite window. So let's talk rear living room versus rear kitchen. A rear living room is going to give you a giant window with a couple rocking chairs, maybe recliners if you're lucky. Well, here, you got them. Um, but, that big rear window, it's looking out the back of your trailer toward the neighbor's campsite. In the case of a rear kitchen, it's looking out your patio awning side. It's looking at your campsite. And that's why Cherokee puts all these big windows right here on the door side of the RV. This RV has some of the best campsite visibility of anything I've ever seen with this layout or class. This is exceptionally well executed. Now we've seen that these are pushback recliners. But because they are free floating, if you want to kind of angle them, turn them, if you want to make them face the TV, if you want to make them face the uh, opposing sofas or the seating in the dinette, you are very readily able to do so. And that's another thing I like about rear kitchens. I've always felt that they're a very good entertainer's floor plan. Now, you don't have to be the type of person that constantly has guests. You don't have to throw some kind of, you know, fancy pants tea parties to enjoy a rear kitchen camper. I don't believe that at all. Uh, I think you, if you're an introvert, it could work very well for you too. But my point is, all of the seating faces inward here. If you want to, you know, uh, shoot the breeze, chew the fat with some friends, very easy to do so. Although, again, we can just turn these chairs and have a direct shot at the entertainment center. Now, I love that brick print on that wall. Again, it just it just looks very cool and very updated. As compared to that, the old foam stuff looked neat, but it was a bear to clean, really. Now, we don't typically include a TV in our Cherokee and Gray Wolf campers because we found that we can put a better or larger TV for equal or less money in uh, aftermarket. And a lot of folks I've talked to are like, we've got TVs at the house. We'll throw one in if we want it. But they have updated their entertainment center uh, for very expansion-friendly entertainment. So we've got a Bluetooth uh, stereo right there, inside-outside speakers, but you see this big pocket next to it. Well, that stereo has expansion ports on the face of it that are easy to get to, so you don't have to try to string wires through the side of the RV. But the point here is that you can uh, very easily add some things in here to expand your entertainment. And if you look inside, you don't have to string uh, uh, an HDMI cable around the side. They give you a protected HDMI port right in there. So if you want to put a Blu-ray, you want to put a satellite, they give you the ability to do that. But not everybody wants those things, so they didn't want to go whole hog. Um, spending money for the benefit of people that want something at the detriment of those that don't. They let you build your own adventure. And if all you need is us to throw a Blu-ray player in this thing to take it home, you give us a call. That stuff is easy. You want a wall moved? Wrong camper. Um, down here, 
remote control electric space heater that we refer to as a fireplace. You can use it for LED visual elements only if you want the cool look or more of that nighttime lighting that we kind of uh, saw earlier. But this thing can produce a pretty surprising amount of heat. So if it's spring or fall and you just don't want to crank up the furnace and burn up your propane, you don't have to. We do have central air. We do have central heat. This is going to be very comfortable in that regard. Very comfortable spring, summer, fall, three seasons camper. We will typically outfit our Cherokees, though, with uh, enclosed holding tanks so that if it does dip below freezing a little bit, you will have a little extra protection. Now, the bathroom door is right next to the entry door, and you see that it is also a dual entry bathroom accessible from the bedroom as well. So being next to the entry door, it's travel friendly, and uh, it is also extremely handy when it comes to uh, just quick ins and outs at your campsite. Kind of like in the kitchen, we've got a six and a half foot tall linen cabinet here versus, you know, a pantry in the kitchen. But And it's not just a big open space. They actually throw shelves in there. So you really can keep a lot of toiletries. You can keep a lot of extra, you know, towels and everything in here. Um, more of the sealed edge counters that we first were introduced to in the kitchen and the living room with a big sink and an oversized corner vanity cabinet right here. So if you do want to keep your, uh, you know, countertop clean and clutter free, you can. Up here, we have a, <coughs> pardon me, we have a cough <coughs> on deck, but we also have a max air vent fan to give you some really impressive whole house airflow. So you open those big breeze windows, crank that fan on, and that's exactly why these doors are slotted to give you uh, extra airflow. You know, you can keep bathroom privacy up and you can exhaust air through the bathroom and recycle fresh air in through the side windows. A little handy towel hanging rack, but a big corner radius shower. The skylight gives us the headroom and the elbow room that we really want and need. And notice no like heat vent right next to the floor or nothing like that. Again, extremely well executed layout. Moving up here to the bedroom, the uh, there is storage below the bed that will kind of pass through inside to outside. Now both sides of the bed have both household and USB outlets. So if you're trying to you know be CPAP, phone charger friendly, whatever, and the big windows that we have in here, plus these mirrored uh, wardrobe doors, make the uh, bedroom in here look and feel even bigger and they give you more uh, obvious visibility of your campsite so if you hear a funny sound at night you can sit up you can look out the window and have an idea what was that noise and hopefully it's a raccoon and not a bear now i'm going to take some time to really point out a couple of the uh, updated equipment pieces present on the uh, 274 cherokee here but the the general gist of it hasn't changed much although cosmetically it is almost like the complete negative uh, evil twin inverse of what it looked like last year. I didn't think it looked bad last year. I really didn't. I actually kind of liked it. I liked how it was, um, it was almost kind of deceiving in a way because it was so simple looking with the brown and red stripe. It looked very classic, but, uh, you know, it had a very modern, uh, aggressive equipment package. And, and now everything just kind of makes sense together. It looks sharp, it looks modern, it is modern, it's heavily equipped, and all the little blue LED accent lights and like the blue uh, decals and stuff on those uh, Moride stable steps, they all just make sense and work together now. Now next to that baggage door there, uh, there is a, a little solar prep plug. Uh, so if you are going to do some off-grid camping and you want to keep your batteries topped off, very easy to do so. Power tongue jack and power awning are also in that easier to utilize category. The entire nose on this is a extra thick aluminum nose sweep with a full automotive paint. So the idea is this thing is rugged, it's going to deflect wind and stones, and it's going to keep looking good. We do like to enclose the uh, uh, holding tank areas on these Cherokees to give you that extra protection. So if it is going to dip below freezing, you'll have that little safeguard, you know. This one has our outside utility shower up front, but you'll find the mini camp kitchen gives you an additional uh, uh, area on the door side to do some quick cleanups. Now next to our sewer station, we have black tank flush and a full bright outside uh, like uh, you know hookup light effectively and that is on a completely separate switch from everything else so that if you are uh, you know trying to quick dump your uh, tanks at night you don't constantly have a bright white light on blinding your neighbors on their side of the camper uh, actually it's kind of funny um, 
outside lights at night are the number one complaint at campgrounds. That's one of those campsite etiquette things that more people need to be a bit aware of. Uh, the 200 pound rated cargo rack on the back here is a cult classic hit favorite kind of thing. And you do not need to take the spare tire off to drop that down, which is nice. We are backup camera ready. Uh, we have those on the shelf at Halo RV. We could, you know, you can get one through our online parts store. Whatever works for you guys, we have that handy. Uh, and all Cherokees, Gray Wolves and Wolf Pups, the entire Cherokee family, they don't build anything that is a non-walkable roof. Every single thing they build is fully walkable. That's a common question people bring up. Sometimes, I get that question more in Cherokees than most other things in this category. I think because they don't have a ladder on the back. Um, the uh, it's, it's interesting, we don't really have a lot of requests for it on a Cherokee product for some reason. The folding cargo rack on the back does make it a little trickier too, because you can't use a generic ladder, you actually have to use one with a folding base so that the ladder and the, the tray are not fighting for space. Now, real quick note, I want to take a little time to discuss a little outside mini camp kitchen here, because uh, this is an optional piece of equipment, but this is one of the few significant changes compared to last season. You know, full fridge, uh, ice maker, whatnot, the uh, and, you know cooktop, the sink, they have really done a bang up job here. But of specific note, the way that that uh, access door drops down so that it doesn't block the kitchen window, that was intelligence in design right there. And a good look with the awning out here so you can see what your patio space is going to look like. This has been a great model. It's been very popular. It's just a, it's just that good core rear kitchen that uh, that any good respectable top level trailer has. And then they took it up a notch with the new deluxe mini outside camp kitchen here. Um, a lot of rear kitchens are now including some form of outside kitchen. And I think it's really handy because I've always felt that, I probably mentioned it inside, I don't know, but uh, rear kitchens are like the entertainer's floor plan. They're very social, you know, it's very good for having friends over and chit-chatting. Well, kind of the same thing out here, but whether you have friends over or not, this is just darn slick. So we've got our uh, little fridge outside, as I call it, Dad's medicine cabinet for the bottled water and barley pop. So you don't have to trek dirt in and out of the camper just to get a drink, nor do you have to get uh, in and out of the camper for ice. And we do have quick little hand cleanup station here. It's actually basically a full outside utility shower and a simple little, I call it the dog dish sink, but it's something, you know? And last year didn't have anything here, so this is still better than nothing. And a little outside cooktop here makes, you know, a little bit of outdoor cooking simple and easy. Now the awning does have tilt and lock awning arms, and as long as you keep these arms within three notches of one another, you can actually leave it slightly tilted. Just one less thing you gotta do, but it also does have an auto rain dump feature with that gas strut. Outside TV hookups over here next to our little grill and tailgate and family entertaining friends and family whatever <laughs> outdoor cook station. These TV hookups inside those little plugs, they will match whatever's going on the uh, little uh, DVD Bluetooth stereo unit inside. Um, you know, so you can, or you could plug something separate into the TV out here, but very handy for game days, race days, etc. Uh, the uh, bigger handle, the anti-slam entry door make coming and going easy. And again, these Moride steps will prevent the trailer from really rocking and rolling and tossing violently around as people come and go because these adjustable foot pegs will drop down to meet basically any campsite. If, if you can't make these steps work properly, then you probably shouldn't be on that campsite is really the long and the short of it right there. Um, but uh, that's kind of this one in a nutshell, in a, what, roughly 20 minute nutshell or whatever. So, you know, we're willing to take the extra time and effort to make sure you understand what you're getting for your dollar here at Halet RV. And uh, when you're ready, guys, you know, take your time, but give us a call when you're ready. All we ask for is just the fair opportunity to work with you, and it does not matter where you are. Distance is not a disqualifier. Uh, so, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.